Sometimes your Wi-Fi just won't work on your iPad and you have difficulty connecting to a network or it drops out or you can't even find the network or you want to connect to public networks. So this video is going to show you some different techniques of troubleshooting your Wi-Fi on your iPad. So the first thing to check is if the router is actually turned on because many modern routers have a switch or a button that allows you to enable and disable the Wi-Fi connection. So if you can connect to the internet using a web browser and your computer, then your router is okay. Make sure your Wi-Fi network's actually working. Now before you spend too much time troubleshooting why your iPad is having a problem, make sure it is actually the device with the problem. So use your laptop, a desktop or a smartphone to connect to the internet and verify that the router's working. Now it's preferable to connect wirelessly to verify that Wi-Fi is working. But if you don't have another wireless device, use your desktop. Check your password. It's not difficult to incorrectly type a password, especially if it's a difficult combination of letters and numbers and special characters. So ensure that you're typing in the correct password and you may just find that it, that's the solution you're looking for. Some passwords can be quite long and complicated and it's easy to mistake an 8 for a B or a 0 for an O. Check your distance from the router. In order to successfully establish a connection and utilize it, you must be within range of the router. The required range for a Wi-Fi connection varies across different routers. However, the standard range is between 150 to 300 feet, based on whether you're indoors or outdoors. If you're too far away, the Wi-Fi signal strength may not be strong enough for your iPad to connect to Wi-Fi. A public Wi-Fi network. If you're connecting through a public Wi-Fi hotspot, such as the ones at coffee shops, cafes or shopping centers, you might have to agree to terms before you can access apps that use that network connection. When you go into the Safari browser and attempt to open a page, those types of networks often send you to a special page where you can verify the contract that you're actually going into with that free provider. And even after you OK that contract and get on the internet, you may not have access to all the sites or all of your apps. Is your iPad Wi-Fi actually turned on? Now go to Settings and then into Wi-Fi and make sure that the actual Wi-Fi selector is turned on. So you can see it here. If it's got a green background, then it's turned on. If you have that turned off, then your iPad is not receiving any Wi-Fi signal at all. Make sure that you've got Ask to Join Networks turned on. Now all the networks that your iPad knows about are visible in Choose a Network and it keeps going out to search for networks that it knows about or that it can see as long as you've got Ask to Join Networks switched on. So if you had that turned off, then the only networks that you will, will um, be able to see are those it already knows about. And any networks that you're hoping to join, you'll have to know all of those um, details like its SSID, its name, the password and the type of security. What happens if you're unable to locate a Wi-Fi network? If you can't find a Wi-Fi network, then verify that it's available, for certainly by tapping settings and Wi-Fi and waiting for the iPad to go out and search for the networks that it sees. And if you don't see that network, you might be attempting to connect to a hidden network. By default, most Wi-Fi networks are either public or private, but a Wi-Fi network can be closed or hidden, which means it won't broadcast its name. So if you need to, to connect to a hidden network, you're going to have to go through other. And typing other means that you'll need to know the name of the network, the security, so whether that's you know, WEP, WPA, WPA2, etc. And you'll also need to know the password. You could reset the iPad's Wi-Fi connection. You can reset the iPad's Wi-Fi connection by just going into Settings and into Wi-Fi and turning that slider off and on. So if I turn that off, 
the Wi-Fi will turn off. Then I turn it on again and that's just resetting it. When you turn it off, all of the Wi-Fi settings will disappear and that's going to force the iPad to search for the Wi-Fi network again and rejoin it. Renewing the lease might just help you get onto the internet. Now an iPad saves or leases, in this case, the IP address of a network for a certain period of time and sometimes that can cause problems. The IP address fortunately can be quickly renewed by clicking the Renew Lease button within the network settings. So the network I'm currently connected to has the tick connected to it. If I tap the I, then I'm going to see all of the settings of that particular network. It's IP address at the moment, and it's uh, subnet mask, etc. And if I want to renew it, I simply tap Renew Lease, and then Renew again. Just refreshes the IP address. Restarting your iPad. So it's not unusual for technology to become unresponsive or hang. So restarting the iPad could just help reset its internal modem. This is a basic troubleshooting step and it can cure all sorts of problems and should always be done before you actually start changing settings. So how you restart your iPad. You hold down the sleep wake button and keep holding it down until you get slide to power off. You slide that, the white apple will appear on the screen and that will turn off the iPad and restart it. If you want to get out of it, you cancel. Restarting your router. If you're still unable to establish a connection, it's time to start your internet router. And this is a simple matter of just turning it off for a few seconds and then powering it back on. And most routers have an on-off switch in the back or if they don't, just turn it off at the power point or just remove the power cable from the back of the router. Wait a few seconds and then turn it back on. And then try and establish the Wi-Fi connection again. And this allows it enough time to reset your Wi-Fi service. Once you've done that, uh, use another device such as a laptop or a smartphone and test the connection before you try to connect the iPad. Now you could always forget the network. So go back into Settings and Wi-Fi. Now if you're still having problems, it's time to actually start changing some settings. And this mostly has to do with telling the iPad to forget what it knows about connecting to the internet and giving it a fresh start. You can do this by going to Settings and then Wi-Fi. And then once you're on the Wi-Fi network screen, you go into the settings for your particular network. So the one that's selected, tap the I and then simply tap forget this network and you can back out of it by tapping cancel but typing forget will forget all of the settings that it knows about for this network so if I type forget and so it switches to an, another network that it knows so immediately I forgot Shell's network 5 gigahertz, it switched to the other available network it knew, Shell's network. Now if I want to go back to Shell's network 5 gigahertz, I've got to wait till the iPad finds it again under choose a network or tap other and type in all its settings. So it's found the network again and all I've got to do is tap that and because it's forgotten all the settings I'm going to need to put the password in. Now remember, you only have to do that once. Now my iPad will remember that network, and when it's in range, will join that network automatically. Reset your network settings. So to reset network settings, go into the settings and into general, and down to the bottom where we've got reset, and then reset network settings. And you may have to enter a passcode. And then you've got the option of resetting it or cancelling it. So if I tap that, it's going to delete all my network settings, returning them to factory default. So any network that it currently knew about will be gone. So I will cancel out of that. I really don't want to do that. That's uh, one of the steps that you can do. Now is your iPad software up to date? So another common issue that can cause problems is allowing your operating system or firmware on your device to become out of date. 
Apple regularly releases both small and large updates, all of which are targeted at enhancing your device or rectifying known bugs and software problems. And it's even easier to upgrade it if an update's available. Now you can do it in two ways. You can check if there is a software update on your iPad. So at the moment I'm in settings, general, and then at the very top of general, software update. And I can see my uh, software is up to date, but if it wasn't, there would be an update there waiting for me to download and install. And I'd also get notified because the little settings app will have a little red circle with a one in it. And simply all you've got to do is tap download and install and you can do that wirelessly um, and it will update your device. The other way of doing it is to connect your iPad to iTunes and then find the device in the devices section. And then you can see here, you can see if it's up to date. It's currently up to date. Uh, if it wasn't, I, all I had to do was connect the iPad to the iPad with the, the, the cable and then update and restore its software through iTunes. And your final step, if all else has failed, is restore the iPad to factory defaults. And this will erase all settings and data on your iPad and, and put it in a like new status. Now before you do this, you need to make sure that you've backed up your iPad. So either back it up through iCloud or again through connecting it to iTunes and in the summary pane, back up now. And this way you've got all of your apps, your purchases, your music, your photos, everything that you need. Then you're going to restore the iPad after that. So you can restore a backup once you've restored it to factory defaults. So you go into settings and into general and the very bottom back to reset and you've got two options. You can reset all settings and this is going to leave all your data, so the music, the movies, the contacts, mail, etc. But it'll re it will reset your preferences or you can erase all content and settings. This protects you by making sure all data is off the iPad, which means information for your iTunes account. Now, if you're selling your iPad or giving it away to someone else, uh, who, who, or, 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 or another family member who's using a different iTunes account, then choose that setting. Now, for our purposes, you could just do the first one, reset all settings, because uh, that'll leave all your, all your information. If that didn't work, then to erase all content and settings and that definitely takes it back to the iPad straight out of the box. So if I tapped erase all content and settings again I've got to put a passcode in as that's the way I've set mine up and then I get one chance to back out of it. Erase and I delete everything and cancel. Now if I erased it then when I turned it on the first thing I would have to do is uh, log into my iCloud account and my Apple account and then it would restore everything or I could hook it back up to um, iTunes and let iTunes restore all my information and once you've got everything working again then go back into Wi-Fi and enter all your network settings so go back into Wi-Fi and then you go and enter a network so putting putting in the network name the type of security and the password now, one of these steps will hopefully help you to fix any troubleshooting uh, problems you have with Wi-Fi connectivity. If none of that works, then it's time to take it back to the Apple Store. So that's all for this lesson.